Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Shera Energy Limited Q3 FY24 results conference call hosted by Kirin Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Chandni Chande from Kirin Advisors Private Limited. Thank you and over to you ma'am. Thank you. On behalf of Kirin Advisors, I welcome you on to the conference call of Shera Energy Limited. From management side, we have Mr. Sheikh Naseem, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Naresh Bansal, Group CFO, now I hand over the call to Mr. Sheikh Naseem. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, I am Sheikh Naseem, uh, the Chairman and Managing Director of Share Energy Limited. So uh, I wish to uh, summarize the three months for December 30, uh, 31st December 2023. The company did a revenue operations of uh, 207 CR for this uh, um, quarter. And if I compare it uh, with the corresponding period, corresponding period for in 2022, we did 151. And the preceding quarter was 182. So uh, with the pad margins uh, of uh, 522 CR and uh, as if, uh, uh, data have already been uh, furnished to you, and you can see there there has been a substantial rise in our uh, top line as well as in bottom line. And the company is uh, looking forward to move in a uh, better direction and uh, doing well. And whatever we have projected for this year, hopefully we will be uh, able to surpassing uh, surpass all our results for the uh, this financial year. So. I wish to uh, have questions from your side, and uh, if you want to know more about us, just feel free to uh, put a word on this phone. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone mm -hmm. who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Hiral Nandu from Kalpavriksh Capital, please go ahead. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Sure. Yeah. Uh, congratulations for the good set of numbers. Thank you. Uh, if, you can, uh, if you can put some light on uh, bullet in business. And, uh, you, you are not very clear in your, uh, I cannot hear you very clearly, sir. Please repeat. Is it better? Yes, it is better now. I think uh, Hello. the participant has been disconnected. Should we take the next question? You may ask him uh, to okay, repeat his question. To loop. Uh, yeah, the yes. participant, Mr. Hiral sir, can uh, join us after the in the loop. So we are taking the next question. Okay. Okay. So the next question is from the line of uh, Deepika Jain from HNI. Please go ahead. <coughs> Yeah. Hi. Am uh, I audible? Yes, yes, very clear. Yeah. Uh, so my question is that uh, with the increased production uh, production capacity, what are the anticipated impacts on revenue and market share? With increased capacity? With increasing production capacity. Yes. Uh, so uh, what are the uh, Anticipated impact on revenue and the market share. In the market share. 
Yeah. Uh, you mean to say our uh, with increase in our uh, production capacity, market share, uh, me kitna change aaya? Wo puchna chah rahi hain aap? Yes, yes, yes. And how it uh, impacted our revenue? Uh, just to summarize you, we are uh-huh. one of the leading players in North India. Rajasthan, we are the uh, biggest one. We have few competitors in NCR, and uh, we operate into all states uh, in NCR and uh, Delhi area. So uh, our share uh, is uh, definitely increasing as compared to our competitor, and uh, we have enhanced our production capacity uh, in this quarter, and uh, we have utilized around 70% of our. Uh, install capacity in this uh, production doing this production okay okay yeah okay uh so going to further question uh, uh are there any upcoming products or innovation innovation yes. can we expect we have already invested as a price in uh, to the exchange also we have uh, procured um, some machineries to make the uh, wind uh, cables and the winding wires for the submersible motors so that machines we have already procured the construction of shed is going on and we we, we think that the capex of this will be completed by end of march and this will add to our uh, production line that will be the cables for the house wiring as well as submersible winding wires okay okay yeah and uh, how do you assess the current market dynamics is the bullish uh, madam uh, there is lot of uh, work going on in infra projects and uh, wherever there is some investment in infra uh, electrical uh, components are always required and we provide the winding uh, suitable winding wires for all these electrical components and the equipments that are used in infra infra projects okay and uh, what are uh, what strategies are in place to adapt the changes what strategies are in place to adapt to, to changes uh, what kind of changes are you referring to uh like uh, any change no madam market uh, changes uh, like we uh, have market changes i'm talking about no no actually you, uh, for the metal it's always uh, lme driven prices and uh, london metal exchange governs the uh, non ferrous metal prices all over the world mm-hmm. and uh, uh, the market has uh, market operates in discipline on uh, these prices and there are no major changes uh, beyond the these factors okay sir okay. okay my last question how does shera energy define and uh, mitigate risk both internal external madam we have a hedging desk uh, within the company itself and uh, first we have to see uh, our pricing is based on london metal exchange price uh, to be settled on a uh, day to day basis that is called cash settlement prices so we fetch orders uh, for the entire day whatever orders are procured and those are taken back by those those are covered and uh, the, the purchase orders are placed uh, in uh, to the our suppliers back to back okay okay, okay. okay. thank you so much thank you the next question is from the line of hiral nandu from kalpavruk capital please go ahead hello thank you thank you for the opportunity my call got dropped due to my network yes Hope i'm audible now yes you are audible yeah thank you so i uh, just wanted to understand uh, if you can put some light on our bullet shell business and the potential opportunity over there and what bullet shell uh, business uh bullet shell business is one of our product that business is going on and uh, started we started with just 5 to 10 tons a month now uh, the capacity for this has grown up to 40 tons to 50 tons a month and we expect uh, in coming year uh, we will uh, develop this capacity to roughly 200 tons every month super Okay. and uh, uh, we 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 got all the approvals we are adding that and uh, some procedural so, uh, things uh, are pending uh, we don't need any approval from uh, defense for this uh, mm-hmm. because this is a, uh, this project is running under a pilot uh, trial lot 
and those companies who are uh, supplying the bullet shells to the defense applications we make raw materials to those companies so okay. uh, we are uh, directly not required to have any approvals from the defense and the companies those who we are supplying they already possess the approvals from the defense great great super 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 Okay. I think okay. I, I have this main question, and I'll come back for in the queue for the full for the follow-up question. Okay, sure. all the best. Welcome, sir. Please, sir. Should we move to the next question? Sure. The next question is from the line of Harsh Mul Chandani from Chris PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. uh thank you sir for opportunity and congratulations for good set of numbers thank you uh, my question is that sir what is the reason for fluctuation in abitta margin and what abitta margin we can expect in the future sir actually we deal into three major components that is aluminium copper and brass and the uh, profit share or uh, abitta margins for all these three products are different so whenever there is a scale fluctuation in the com, uh, content of our sale if say aluminium sales goes high then the abita margins are high if copper sales goes goes high abita margins slightly drop brass sales goes high abita margins again move moves up so this varies as per the composition of uh, raw uh, material mix that we have in our product, uh, product range and that's the reason there is always a slight variation in abita margins uh, uh, every quarter Okay, or uh, sir, are our abita margin dependent on commodity price, or we are able to completely hedge? No, no, no. Uh, abita margin never uh, is affected by our commodity prices because our sales and purchase are hundred percent backed. Um, whatever the sale order we receive is backed by our purchase orders. So we work on our differential price, uh, difference of fabrication uh, prices. The company earns the money in terms of the fabrication uh, rates that we get for our products. Okay. So what bit uh, margin can we expect in the future? It, uh, I, I can tell you uh, to be very. Uh, I should not uh, give you uh, exact figure, but uh, I will give you assessment. If the aluminium is roughly 250 rupees per kg, the bit margins they are. It stands as around uh, 15, 10 to 15 percent. The copper is priced at around 800 rupees per kg. The abita margins are in the range of uh, 5 to 7 percent. The brasses are in the range of 600 rupees. The abita margins again is uh, varies from uh, 8 to 3 percent. It depends on product to product. So, okay, if the product mix are different for on our sale, the abita margin fluctuation you will see in every balance sheet. Okay, okay. So uh, going future, uh, will मतलब our production will shift to aluminium or copper? Can you give that much guidance or this uh, this um, drive uh, we are uh, not uh, authorized to tell you as of now. This always depends on the government projects what they are working into. If the government is buying more of aluminium, then our product line goes more in, into aluminium. If the government focuses more on copper. then our product line goes into copper it's already already order based the production the production is happening against all the orders and the orders originate from the government and from the infra projects and according to their requirements and the production happens okay so okay it is not that we can push uh, we uh, since abita margins in aluminium is high so we should put all our money into aluminium that may not work so it is always better to follow the market trend if the aluminium is moving high we are moving more into aluminium if copper is moving high we move our production line more into copper okay understood sir uh, sir what is optimum capacity utilization we are working at 70% so up to how much we can go we can uh, we can go up till 90 to 92% that capacity uh, is workable with us okay sir uh, uh, thank you sir for any follow up question i will join queue Sure, sir. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Yashwanti Khedkar from Khojin Finvest. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity. 
sir you were uh, you were already explaining about libitta margin how does it vary from product to product but since yes. still we are still in the range of around 3 to i mean at libitta level 4% and at a pack level 2% so what can yes. what strategies we can employ to better it off company has already focusing on uh, this madam the new expansions that is going into cable division where the EBITDA margins will be in the range of 15 to 20% but how much on so that investment we have already done and uh, we expect the production to commence by end of uh, march and uh, next year uh, i expect the company will grow in, into its EBITDA margins yeah but how much the cable uh, how much cable operation will contribute to the revenue and how much that can affect our ebitda margins for first year it will be around 20 to 30% and uh, following years it may uh, go up to 30 to 40% of our total revenues okay but that will still impact our uh, i mean do you say the margin will be 12 to 15% that will really help us to improve our margin overall uh, at least definitely madam two to, um, two to three years as you move ahead the margins definitely increase and if uh, you go into the history of the company where we started with a beta margins of less than 4% and uh, fat margins of around 0.5 0.6% every year you see every quarter the fat margins are also increasing and beta margins are also increasing since the operation as the smoothness in operation improves capacity utilization is improved the beta margins are also improved So what are the range you see? Uh, maybe FY25. What is the range for the EBITDA margin you see for FY25? Overall margin. Uh, overall EBITDA. Uh, I can give you a rough uh, approximation, not an exact one, but uh, you can see a um, figure that uh, will be comfortable for all our investors, and uh, we wish uh, the EBITDA margin to grow minimum by two to three percent next year. Okay, so we will still be um, around eight to ten percent. Around, around that. Okay, so uh, can you just explain your investment strategy in our Zambian market? Uh, Zambian market, we have uh, recently started the uh, things. The legal formality work is uh, going in process, and uh, the company has been uh, registered uh, there. Now the registration with all other. Uh, Taxation department like labor, pollution, and all those things are in, uh, going on. And as we complete all our uh, things in um, months, or, or one month or two months time, then uh, our operations will start. And the revenue of uh, Zambian operation will also be reflected. Uh, you will see some shadows in uh, the first quarter of 25, and uh, I think post uh, first quarter uh, the Zambian operation will be in good swing. And what production we will be taking among three uh, metals we handle this? Pardon? Among three metals which we handle at Indian uh, operation, what would be the production? Indian uh, operations is totally different. Zambian operation is totally different, madam. The metals are not seen. What would be the operation over there? In Zambia? Yeah. Ah, uh, Zambia again. We are coming up with some cable uh, investments. Uh, we will be uh, putting up a cable plant there. and uh, we are uh, working on to the mining operations for uh, procuring uh, and reducing our, our cost of raw material so we will be buying the copper ingots or copper cathodes from zambia and uh, we will be selling uh, copper cables into the local market in zambia okay so it will be uh, catering to the zambian market yes this will help the company to increase the uh, ebitda margin that's the reason i have told you the ebitda margin is going to grow not because of uh, i'm going to increase my finished product price but rather we are focusing more uh, how to reduce our raw material price so the investment in zambia will help us to uh, improve our purchase purchasing and uh, that will reduce our purchase prices and uh, hopefully we wish and we can see a huge improvement in our uh, bottom line what is the investment you are planning in the zambian unit sir pardon what is the investment you are planning in the zambian unit initially for this year we will be doing around uh, 1.2 million dollars and uh, as the business grows the investment will be done uh, looking to the market size 
and all the machineries will be uh, bought in some Zambia market. Are you are you importing some? No, no machines will be uh, some machines will be exported from India, and few will be bought from China and Germany. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll come back in. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. Ladies Thank you. and gentlemen, please press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Mohit Arora. He is an individual investor. Congratulations for this kind of number and your new business in Zambia. Uh, I would like to ask a question with regard to gas production. So you earlier mentioned in your communication that uh, it is some innovative technology that has been used by you to manufacture the brush uh, pellet cell that will have the cheaper cost. Yes. So can you can you please provide the detail about it? Sir, the and technology, everything I cannot explain uh, to an investor because this is uh, something that is secret uh, to be kept secret in our production line. But uh, yes, we have some unique facilities. That uh, can do uh, special alloy suitable to make uh, brasses, uh, suitable to do the reverse extrusion um, uh, on our material. Uh, and can you please provide the detail with regard to the potential customers and the geographical side of the customers? So the potential customers are in and uh, near uh, NCR, and uh, we are catering to them only. And those customers are already registered with uh, these defense uh, people, and uh, they are approved vendor to supply them uh, the bullet shells. And uh, okay, thank you, sir. And one more thing, uh, as I can see that you have given uh, that your financial statements, the financial results includes a two twenty crore of exceptional items. So I would like to know about this. Sir, if you exceptional item is the revenue that we uh, earned by this uh, investment uh, in our Shira Infra, that was a company owned by Shira Energy, and we disinvested there, and this money was rather used uh, for our Zambian uh, investment. So uh, that revenue has been uh, earned by the this investment there. Okay, sir. and uh, another question from my side. Okay. So, as uh, as per the earlier conversation, uh, you mentioned that you will be doing, you will be starting your business on the submersible wires and housing cables, and that will lead to a greater margin. So, uh, where we have reached in that, uh, like, where is the, uh, uh, at what level uh, you have captured uh, at manufacturing stage? Uh, sir, I have all uh, told as I have already apprised you that uh, the shade construction of shade is going on and we expect the shade work to be completed by end of this march and the commissioning and everything of the machinery will be done in month of april and by june we will be in position to give the products to the market we are trying our uh, best to do it uh, one month ahead of our uh, schedule time well, hopefully we will be in position to do that yeah sure thank you sir Thank you. Thank you. And the next Thank question you. is from the line of Mayur Mahapatra. He is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Can you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. Sir, sir uh, congratulations for good set of number. I wish you best of luck for near future also. So Thank I have you. two questions. You know, what is the uh, project? projected uh, projection for top line and bottom line for financial year this year. That is the first sure. question. And second question is, uh, do we have acquired any customer for our upcoming cable business? And uh, what are the customers? Those are uh, Indian no. customers or overseas customers? Okay. Thanks. Now, coming down to your first question, uh, as I have uh, already briefed in our previous uh, conferences, that uh, we, the company is aiming, uh, we did uh, 696 last year, and this year target was 800 CR. Against 800 CR, up till nine months, we have done 590 something. So uh, we expect uh, to not only achieve, but uh, exceed, excel the targets of 800 CR. 
and uh, coming down to pipelines the, our target uh, was around 12 cr for this financial year against which we have already done 11.34 and we expect to excel our uh, bottom line targets as well now coming to your question on the cable uh, cable uh, uh, product after uh, we make some production then the samples will be drawn and these samples will be uh, sup supplied to furnished to many uh, potential customers then this uh, they, these customers they carry out the test uh, with, within uh, their own premises these uh, are used for into heavy duty submersible motor so they need uh, testing approvals by the uh, by the uh, at the customer end itself so that process will start by end of april and i expect those approvals will be with us by end of may after that the commercial production uh, will go on and uh, we have set up all major submersible like you see lubi and all that there are many brands in india there who are making the uh, submersible motors so their approval is required and for house wiring uh, after the machines will be installed first work will be to get an isi certifications from our indian government after the certification is uh, achieved then the material will move into the open market so we can uh, assume that q3 of 25 uh, we can expect some revenue to add it from that particular business q3 will our... be bullish sir q3 we, uh, we will be well set off you will see uh, the results will be coming uh, shadows will come or uh, you can say some uh, lines will come in uh, q1 as well and q2 by q2 we will be established player into cable congratulations thanks 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 that's what for my sales thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of saroj from hni please go ahead hello sir good afternoon very good afternoon to know that how much you are globally uh, able to penetrate in the market and now uh, what like how much you are planning to go for the couple of years like how much market capital yes. last year madam we were very bullish into global market also and uh, we uh, our uh, contribution into our sales was around 12 to 15% of our top line was going in, into exports this year indian market is uh, performing better than the global uh, scenario and uh, we wish to contribute more into india and uh, we are rather having more order books than we can uh, supply them on time so uh, i wish this time, this is a time that we should focus more into india and if something uh, goes slow in india then the global market is open for us and we already are into global market we do exports parallelly as well but uh, as as on date we are not very much focusing on to exports uh, because uh, our domestic market is growing very big and huge mm, okay thank you and the one more question that uh, uh, where have you used the fund that you have raised like uh, in which investment or any capex uh the fund raised through ipo yes you are referring yes. to the fund raised through ipo it was yes. um, it was majorly uh, utilized into working capital cycles no capex was done with uh, this in uh, fund it and was majorly the, used into work, working fund. capital pardon hello Yes. Please go on, ma'am. What about the fund received from uh, this investment? This investment uh, money is going into Zambia, ma'am. All our uh, investment that is uh, initially we have already pumped in roughly two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, uh, and as this uh, by, by end of this month, I expect another two hundred fifty thousand will go there. and by march we will be in position to deploy all our funds there and so do you have any plan for capital expenditure in the next coming quarters madam we are uh, right now focusing more into zambia and uh, in india we have already made uh, capex for our cable divisions 
So let it flourish and let it uh, run smoothly. Then we will come back uh, on our next investments. Okay, sir. Thank you. Last question Thanks. that I have is any new clients that you have added to your portfolio and what is your retention rate on clients? Madam, but the company is constantly growing. If you see into the background of the company, in the last five years, the company is growing at a rate of roughly 10 to 15% every year. And we wish to grow at the rate of 25 to, uh, 20 to 25% every year uh, in the coming years as well. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Amit Kapoor, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You are audible. Excellent. Okay. So, yeah, first of all, um, congratulations on a good set of numbers. Well done Thank on you. your hard work there. Uh, just uh, just continuing the theme around the exceptional item. So, was it a 100% disinvestment or was it a partial disinvestment? In no, that? it was 100% disinvestment, sir. Right. And, and what was the rationale behind it? Was it just to focus on... Cable we have or? a uh, better avenues uh, in Zambian market. This investment definitely was supposed to give us a good result, but it will. It was taking time, and uh, we had to wait another two three years for uh, the things to happen into that company. But uh, we got an immediate uh, um, uh, plans into overseas business, and uh, the management was of the opinion that uh, in uh, raising. Uh, to invest there, we needed some funds to be raised. So it was better to disinvest uh, from there and make bit more profits into Zambia. Got it, sir. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so just one other question. Um, so I see basically your income has basically in, in, increased quarter on quarter. So from 183 to 207 crores. Uh, yes. But it looks like the margin has actually gone down comparatively. I mean, it's flat essentially profit before the exception license. Yes. And yes. there are some other expenses of about 15 crores in there, which is uh, mm -hmm. increased from 6 crores. So could you just give some color on that? So these expenses, if you see, 14.78 uh, crores, they comprise of uh, the custom duty, uh, reversal uh, also. The, whenever we you export and uh, you use our uh, Indian products where you have already paid the custom duty, that time when you book the sale, then the provision entry has to be cleared on account of uh, getting the custom duty uh, through advance license. So those uh, expenditure uh, has increased because we have availed that facility uh, to improve our liquidity. And if, the, if you consider this uh, as a expenditure, rather it is a part of our purchase. Uh, but uh, as per balance sheet, you cannot define it into purchase since uh, it is a part of a duty expenses. Got it clear? Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I understand what you mean. Yes. When you uh, are ex so last year when we exported, uh, whatever uh, custom duty, custom duty is roughly 5% of our exports. Yes. So that was amounting to roughly 5 crores. So that time we used our domestic material to export, and if you use 100% the domestic material and export as such without the impact of custom duty, then all your exports will make losses. So in that case, you have to get a duty drawback on customs uh, for whatever you have exported. So that duty drawback was availed this year, and uh, that's okay. the reason um, uh, the purchase price was reduced, and it was uh, written off as uh, other expenses. Right, so we are expecting it for next quarter to kind of come back to the... It will uh, reduce uh, next quarter. Other right. expenses okay. will be lower than what uh, it is being reflected here. Right, good, okay. Uh, and just one final thing, do you get any sort of incentives or government subsidies or government incentives? In, no, in, sir, as of now we don't export. have any incentive subsidies. The company okay. is not having any incentives. In the and government, we don't have any incentive subsidies on our investments. Right. And there, is there any incentive being offered in Zambia any, by any chance? Because sometimes FBI There has... is one incentive no. that is uh, uh, that uh, we have yet to finalize it. They have identified, they have certain places identified by the government. And if you invest there, then you get a 10-year income tax exemption. So that's the incentive right. that we expect to get. But uh, it's it's not finalized that are we going to avail it or we are going to leave it. So I have to see the operational difficulties 
to operate from there and what are the merits and demerits to do the business there so management will uh, take a call upon uh, in the final study on the geographical location and then it will it will be taking we rather wish to take that uh, uh, incentive it's a huge incentive because 30% is your income tax layer there and if you okay. save 30% on that so but uh, we are still working on that we have not yet opted that we are going to take that exemption but uh, we wish to take rather we are uh, focusing more on to the geographical locations of our business operation great so uh, i think you are very bullish on zambia so wishing you all the best for the next few years we we'll pay united thank, thank, thank you thank you sir thank you thank you and the next question is from the line of harsh mulchandani from chris capital please go ahead please. sir what is the reason for decrease in interest cost and is it sustainable decrease in interest cost decrease in interest cost decrease in interest cost is sustainable so whenever we are buying any raw material it uh, the interest is based uh, on on the lc and if you have availed your lcs on a lower side that time the interest cost reduces you pay direct interest to the supplier that's the reason the interest cost is reduced okay and it is sustainable for long term or it is one of kind it will be it will be sustainable and uh, the management has taken a decision uh, not to uh, increase its uh, interest cost uh, financial cost and uh, we are uh, focusing more on that okay and sir uh, uh, power sector is giving good demand in india so what is the vision of power company for next 3 to 5 years on revenue side and on operating profit side uh to give you a general statement on this if you see uh, people used to talk uh, about uh, things happening in foreign countries they discard things after certain uh, use of uh, certain period of usages so that thing have started coming to india as well if you see the first step the government has taken is to discard any vehicle uh, above uh, 15 years of uh, its registration that vehicle cannot run on the road so and in ncr it is 10 years only so that is the first step that indian government has started taking this will come down to into many other places where the life cycle of every transformer will be decided like in us in uh, canada in uh, europe countries every transformer has its own life cycle here it is not happening that here whenever the transformer is failing then only the replacement is taking place otherwise if it's working for years and years together it will keep on working nobody is rather uh, having a um, uh, thought on this ki since the transformer is 30 years old or 20 years old so it's a, having up uh, something that is a 20 years old technology is consuming more power it's consuming more, it's generating more heat so uh, these things will come up in india as well and uh, i expect the market will grow into replacement market you will see lot of uh, things happening in future okay so sir what is the revenue guidance for our company for next 3 to 5 years revenue guidance as well profit guidance 3 uh, year company size may double from here more than double okay uh, in pet also sir if top line grows everything grows you know but uh, rather top line grows by 10% bottom line grows by uh, 12 to 13% because your operating expenses are constant if you are growing more on top line with the same of uh, manpower and same other uh, administrative expenses your bottom line is uh, uh, growth is uh, more healthy so i expect growth will be better in bottom line as well okay thank you sir thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen we will like to remind you that you may press star and one to ask questions the next question 
is from the line of Rishikesh. He is from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Um, yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is with respect to our cable expansion. So what sort of uh, revenue potential do we see from this project? So uh, for this coming year, I expect the revenue to be in the range. Uh, added revenue from cable will be in the starting from 100. It may go to 300 CR. Okay. 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 And. Uh, and uh, our bullet shell business, which is a new business that we were talking about earlier. So what revenues are we doing here? Sir, uh, I have not evaluated in terms of value on that. I look into the tonnage. So uh, tonnage, what we are doing as of now is roughly 40 to 50 tons a month. And uh, this will uh, improve next year. And for next year, my target will be 80 to 100 tons. Okay, and uh, you also said you'll be expanding this to 200 per month. Uh, yes, that that future. that capacity we are focusing at, but things will happen gradually since the project is going into uh, trial phases, and uh, uh, it will take a, you know the anything to get approved into ministry. Uh, it takes a lot of trials and a lot of time, so I expect uh, it will take another one and a half year or so. Uh, to uh, run it full fledged. Okay, just wanted to get a sense what sort of revenues uh, can this business make on let's say 200 uh, per month. Sir, capacity. Presently, it is contributing not more than 5% of our total revenue. Okay, so. Not more than that. Okay. So I expect uh, even if it grows to that level, it will contribute uh, to roughly 10% of our total revenue. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, we would like to remind you that you may press star and one to ask questions. So, may we conclude, sir? Uh, there is a question from Harsh Mool Chandani. Should we take? Yeah. Yeah. The, question, the next question is from the line of Harsh Mool Chandani from Chris PMS. Please go ahead. Sir, our winding wire business is growing very fast. So, what is the reason for diversifying in uh, submersible motor wire se segment? Is it a related business? Uh, it is not a related business. Raw, one of the raw material is common, that is the base metal, that is copper. And uh, other item and technology is totally different. What the company is aiming, winding wire has a uh, limitation in uh, growing into the uh, bottom lines. The EBITDA margins uh, globally, not only in India, is operating in the range of 5 to 7 percent and not more than uh, 7 to 8 percent. So to increase your EBITDA and uh, to make uh, your investment giving uh, more fruitful results, I need to add up into a product that are similar to our line, but are having uh, better EBITDA margins and better profit margins. So that's the reason we are focusing on cable divisions. Okay. And so there are many players in this segment already. So what gives us confidence of success in uh, submersible motor uh, segment and cable segment? Uh, I know there there will be a competition, but where we edge, uh, where the edge we will be having over others is our technology. First, uh, the company is a technically fully technically competent company, and second, our experience and expertise into doing into non-ferrous metal more than 25 to 30 years now. So. Uh, it's a not a new. It will not be a new investment uh, for us. Uh, like uh, entering into cable market will be new thing for us. Uh, major raw material is copper, and we deal into copper for years together. So we understand how it moves and how it is working, and we know the market dynamics. So that will give the company an edge. And uh, for uh, doing uh, moving ahead, the company has not invested a huge money into its capex making the cables. We have already procured the second-hand machines, the used ones, and we are competent enough to make them run efficiently and efficiently. So our team is working on that, and uh, uh, 
we will be doing uh, with a very less investment. Uh, the major investment come, will be happening only into the working capital cycle. So the company is very much confident that uh, we are not taking any risk in terms of capex investment, and we will be doing good into that business. Okay, and sir, uh, uh, can we supply our cable products to our existing customer as well, or this will be new set of customers? Uh, our existing customer uh, also buy a few uh, some cable, so that uh, market is uh, already with us. And beyond that, we will be adding few more customers. And uh, not only into the winding wires, we will be adding some into uh, house wiring, into project works, uh, into service station uh, making uh, companies. So cables are required in many places. So all those uh, people will be added to our customer bank. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Amit Kapoor. He is an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Just one more question I had. Uh, so, what is the workforce uh, strength right now, and uh, how many employees do we have now? Can you please repeat your question, sir? I didn't get it very clear. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, what is the workforce like for us? I mean, how many employees do you have? Is it oh, the manpower? Yes, the manpower. In a group, yes. we are uh, operating uh, with a manpower of roughly 350 plus on a uh, company's role, and we have some contracts also. And uh, if we I, I add all the contract workers and all that, the total strength goes around 500 plus. Okay. So, are we looking at expanding that in the upcoming years, or is that kind of sufficient to give us a... Some, uh, uh, on the company's role, we are not going to expand, since our manpower, those who are uh, devoted and re dedicated for years, they will be continuing with the company. And for the new things that are coming up, everything will go in, into contracts. Okay. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Ms. Chandni Chande for closing comments. Please go ahead. Thank you everyone for joining the conference call of Shira Energy Limited. If you have any query, you can write to us at research at the advisors.com. Once again, thank you everyone for joining the conference. I thank you everyone for the deep concerns and the blessings of my company. And I wish um you all uh, and to bless us continuously and uh, be a part of our success story for future as well thank you on behalf of kiran advisors that concludes this conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect you. your lines thank you